What's up, Porsche buddies? Uh, time to fumble through the configurator again. Uh, this is the this is the spice of life, man. The chase, that pursuit. Uh, you know, I, I love the cars I have. I love my 991.2, uh, my 2019 GT3 RS. I love my 718 GT4. Uh, in fact, I just got the car working properly again. I've done a bunch of different exhaust iterations, and I've actually gone back to the first exhaust, which was factory headers, factory rear section, and sole performance over axle pipes after trying a bunch of different headers and race exhausts and different combinations of full exhaust and partial exhaust and all that stuff. And so the GT4 setup, I think the GT4 has about 2,000 miles. I have about 3,400 miles in my RS. Uh, now I just kind of, I don't have a daily driver and I only live three miles from my garage. So, um, I don't, uh, don't put tons of miles on cars, but, uh, but you know, they, they, they just pick one to drive. And so the, the big conundrum will be, uh, a lot of it will depend on when the, when the 992 GT3 Touring comes out. But at some point, uh, I would like to get one. I actually made the call to my friends at Porsche Wilmington in North Carolina. I called uh, my friend Tom Walsh and said, uh, you know, he was expecting that call. I said, so what's the story? Can I get a GT3 Touring? And he said, I'm pretty sure we can get you one. So that makes me start to think and start to think uh, about uh, the GT4. Do I do I sacrifice it for a touring? You know, it's uh, seventy. We'll show you sixty-five to seventy thousand dollars more than the GT4. Um, does it become redundant owning two 911s? I don't know. We're not going to answer those questions here today. Uh, I feel fortunate to be able to make this even even consider this, uh, but the the concept of the idea. One of my dreams has been, uh, or goals, I shouldn't say dreams, but one of the goals has been to have a, so ever since they announced the 911R, would be to have the M3 to drive around in, having a having a, a GT3 RS of some sort, and then, man, wouldn't it be cool to have a GT3 Touring to complement the RS. So we're going to chase it. Why the heck not? So let's go in and I want to show you what my configuration look like or looks like on what I'm considering on my 911. So you scroll all the way to the bottom and they just made the configurator available. Now I would do a manual and so it looks like manuals would probably be early to mid 2022. So I got some time to figure this out. I don't think I want a 992 GT3. Uh, I think uh, I want to keep the keep the RS uh, and uh, I don't intend on selling it, at least not, not at this moment. And so theoretically what we would do and it says here, GT3 touring package model will be available for delivery in early 2022. Please check with your local dealer for more information. Now there's conflicting information here, but supposedly, and you even noticed back in the selection tool, uh, touring is not an option. Now touring is a separate model. And so theoretically, the touring package uh, is going to be a, a separate allocation. Now, when it says 911 GT3 with touring package, you would think it's a package, but it sure seems, based on the configurator here, that, you know, like these, a turbo, a turbo cab, a turbo S, and a turbo S cab, those are different models and technically different allocations. So the Turbo S is not an option, it's a different model. Uh, and so we would expect, I would expect the Touring to be the same thing. At least that's what I'm hoping, because it increases my odds of getting one. And if I don't, I don't, but, uh, but I wanna chase this. I really would like to have this car, of course we all would. Uh, but the, the goal of the Touring for me would be to not get crazy from a from a aggressiveness perspective i want this to be my daily drivable comfortable gt3 version uh and so that's why i want to i'm going to show you some of the things i'm considering here uh but i want it to be a little loud from a color perspective uh, but i want it to be softer and more comfortable from a daily driving perspective and also more engaging so i'd, I'd love to have the manual
So if we're talking colors, so let's go to just work through the configurator here. Um, obviously, white is an awesome color. Same thing with Carrera, white metallic. I actually prefer the base white over the metallic white, you know, if I have the choice. Uh, but I'm generally going to choose the, and let's go to the regular view here so you can see a little better. Uh, but if I was going to do white, I would do base white. Black is out, red. I mean, maybe someday I'd like to have a red 911. I think that'd be cool. But I'd be more inclined to get a red Ferrari someday or a red NSX or something like that than I would be a 911. I don't dislike yellow, but I don't think I would ever buy a yellow car. Um, you know, yellow is kind of cool. And then these are all the base. You know, I'm, I don't think I'm ever going to get a black 911 uh, or really any black cars again uh, for my S2000. You know, agate gray is kind of a nice color. Would be really, um, really subdued and really nice looking on a on a GT3 Touring. That could be a cool color. Same thing with uh, you know some sort of version of silver metallic. Um, like if you did GT silver, would look really classy. That's the word I was looking for. Uh, and I, I've talked about you know if you could do gentian in an RS, I think that would be cool. But I don't love the gentian blue or gentian i can't remember which way i'm supposed to pronounce it already uh this is what i have in my gt4 it's okay but I, i'm not absolutely in love with that that color it shows a lot of fingerprints looks kind of like a black car but it you know it does it is redeeming when it's really really nice i'm not a chalk fan chalk has too much beige in it for me uh, i would want it to be more um silver like that kind of flat silver rather than a beige look. Looks really cool in this photo, but but I'm not a huge fan of that. I don't like lava, so I wouldn't choose lava. And I don't like any kind of baby blue, so shark blue's out. So the color that I want is one of two. It's either go crazy python green, which I think would be sick. Or, and this is a stinger, you spend the extra eight grand so you go with um, some sort of custom color and this shows you the you know the red on the configurator but what i would do if i could get so if i could get an allocation for a gt3 touring those of you not uh, who haven't bought porsches before you, you have to understand that the first difficulty on a gt3 is you can't just go in and buy one you have to have an allocation so you have to have a great relationship with the dealer they have to you know sort of uh, anoint you as a chosen one uh, and you have to then um, um, you know wait for it you have to order it you know, just walk in and, and buy a car unlike you know unlike what you're used to in buying you know a regular car especially in an environment like today where we're sure at you know market market highs I don't know if I call it a peak but market highs especially in vehicle sales and so it can be rather difficult to get a hold of one but what I was thinking what I would love to do would be to do this color. Brewster Green, which I learned about from my, uh, my friend uh, Bob Linton. It's also referred to in Porsche as Linton Green, uh, because I think he's had a number of cars in this color in, in the past. But Brewster would be freaking insane. I would love to have this. So here's a Brewster Green GT3 Touring right there wouldn't that be just absolutely insane i would love to have that let's see if we can find some more photos of, of this color mm, let's see so brewster has a british british racing green style too there's emerald green uh, but i want a green car i don't know why i just do you can say what you want and get all cranky and get all angry. So we could do a traditional green. You know, this is a lot more, still a little bit bright. Uh, but python green doesn't have yellow in it like lizard green does, at least not as much. Uh, and so I was never a huge fan of lizard green, but although I have lizard green interior on my, on my RS. Uh, sorry, you're going to hear my fan kicking up here as we record this. But... I think you know Python green would be pretty darn incredible, uh, and keep it simple on the inside. Uh, but Python green is something that uh, I'd be super interested in rocking. This you also have to remember. This is what I do for a living. I buy cars and I detail them and I modify them, and the cars then create interest. The interest then creates followers. The followers then create 
you know, a sale or they buy things from me if I can figure out a way to provide them value. And so doing this whole car dance for me is, um, seems a bit ridiculous, but this is, this is what I do. This is what I do for a living. Uh, and so making these, you know, making an investment in a green car might bring in another thousand or 2000 people. You know, if those 2000 people spend, you know, a few hundred dollars on stuff, you can see that there's a return on investment um, by by doing these things, doing things like this, and finding and chasing. And you know whether you like green or not, it certainly would be a, a cool looking car to add to the stable. You know I'm thinking about uh, you know my purple M3, got my Le Mans blue, and obviously I'm I have an affinity to blue and white. Um, but I, I would I would either do this for a forty two hundred dollar option. Or we would do paint a sample if we could get an allocation for that and do a darker British racing or, in this case, Brewster Green. And so then your next choice is wheels. And this is where I'd be torn and I'd probably do black. I think the, the neat thing about green is that you could really do any color. Um, so the satin black's actually a little darker than that person. Um, you certainly wouldn't do a sharp blue lip on a green car. Uh, you could do even do the uh, you know the sort of bronze look. You could even pull that off, which I'm sure a lot of people would like. I've bronze. I've had several sets of bronze wheels in my life, and I'm kind of over the whole bronze idea. Uh, I'd probably either do, depending on what I chose to do on this car, I'd either do dark silver. I'd leave it alone and go with uh, silver. You know, so. In touring fashion, you would leave the non-blackout package, so you would leave the window trim in the chromish or the satin nickel type finish, and you do the satin wheels, and you have a grown-up version of green, you know, a very subdued version of green. Obviously, we're going to change the, the color of the calipers, um, but I'm thinking I'd probably choose to spend the extra money and go the dark on green look. And we'll explain that as we go through, and we'll show you the, the, the price differences. So then I would choose, um, I would choose to do a leather interior with fabric centers. Now, this is going to be controversial. People are going to freak out. But I'm not going to do sport buckets. I'm actually going to do a four-way uh, sport seat plus. Uh, I like the four ways. I think they're comfortable. I have no need for the extra weight of the 18-way seats. I don't have back problems and things like that. Uh, so the 18 ways are not something I'm choosing. I'm not doing full buckets. I have buckets in the RS. It'll make the RS feel a little more special. Um, I'm not going to be taking this car likely to the mountains. This is going to be my, you know, my touring around town kind of car. Uh, and so uh, I'm looking to be engaged, but uh, and that's what the manual is going to do for me. But I'm going to do just the base seats on this car, which I think look great. They're comfortable. They still hold you in better than almost any seat on the planet uh, outside of some sort of racing bucket. But we're going to leave the seats alone like this. But I would choose to do the deviated stitching, the GT Silver stitching option, uh, which looks like it costs you uh, what the GT stitching was always free. Uh, but now the GT stitching to do that costs you, what is that, 1500 bucks? Uh, yeah, three hundred thousand, fifteen hundred ish dollars to do the GT Silver stitching, and I think I would do that. It looks nice on the dash and on the seats and stuff like that. So base seats, leather interior. Uh, the other thing we'll talk about this at the end is um, what if you did some sort of exclusive uh, interior, uh, which is I forget where it was. Somewhere in this options package, there's an option to do exclusive interior, which I think two-tone exclusive manufactured leather interior, black, and choice of color. Yeah, you have to have adaptive. Uh, I don't think I would want that. What I would want, oh yeah, 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 that's right. You have to choose exclusive manufactured leather interior. Uh, and so it would cost $15,000 for that. Now, in a perfect world, you would do the, skip the Python green, do Brewster green, and then do a, some sort of um, tan, not tan, 
but some sort of brown, like a dark, deep brown interior would be would be perfect. And I think that would make this car extremely valuable long term, uh, especially since it'll be low mileage. I will PPF this entire car likely. Uh, this would be, you know, that that's if I wanted to make it really, really special and really unique, uh, which also would add, uh, what was that, 12000 So 8000 plus 15000 would add $22,000 to the sticker. We'll play with that as we, as we kind of finish up the build here. So let's go with the real-world spec versus what, uh, what spec I, I might end up doing if, uh, if I had the opportunity. Here it is, the exclusive leather interior, which means you can choose... It comes with all extended leather, and you can choose to do some sort of combination of, uh, of leather. So you can choose the color, uh, and, and then it adds more deviated stitching and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so it does, it does give you the ability to, to uh, hopefully, you could choose something really, really cool. Uh, but that's something that maybe you'd have to get an allocation for that, and I don't know if that's even possible. So let's go back to our base build uh, of what I'm thinking, which would be also to do the carbon roof. Uh, so this would then complement going the dark theme, right? So I'd go dark by choosing the GT3 Touring package in black. And it doesn't show it here, but I think what the Touring package in black does, it says here that it's, it changes the side window trims to black. The tinted lower front tail light units and tailpipes in black and the Porsche logo and the rear and sat in black. So the configurator is not showing the change here, but I think it changes this to black. And so this would be go bright green and then a dark theme, which I have a tendency to like. You'd pay the money for the slightly lighter weight carbon fiber roof, uh, which shows, uh, it shows a 30% weight reduction compared to the standard roof. Now, 30% of nothing is not much. So, um, you know, imagine this all black, uh, the windshield, the squares are black, everything's black, it has a black accents, the tail lights, the tail light area becomes, like the Porsche logo becomes black right here. Uh, and, and so you're kind of, it's like, a, like an Audi black optics package or something like that. I wouldn't do, so I, I don't mind this, so if we're doing these black accents, like the black plastic on the edges and having this black, it doesn't make any sense to spend the 660 for um, the change, changing the mirror base color. I'm not a under, you know, a, a puddle thingy, so like a thing that shines on the ground, I don't care about that. I would spend the money on the fancy fuel cap, I don't show a picture of it, but I would, I would do that, I ended up buying it anyway takes the black plastic fuel cap and makes it look pretty. If you were going down the black route, you could do something like this, but this is something I could always add. I could do magnetic reflectors if I wanted to. So I don't think I would pay four, 340 bucks for that one. I could just buy some magnet ones when I'm going to pull them off anyway and do a, a real you know, PPF. And then you could choose exterior mirror trims and carbon fiber. This is something I'm thinking about. So if you did the roof in carbon fiber, would you put the caps in carbon fiber? I think that would be a nice touch. So let's leave that on there in our blackout version of the of the of the touring. Performance, we're gonna choose our six-speed manual. This is freaking nonsense. Oh, for those of you that are in California, I know you love it. You've got to get out of there, man. This is this is insane. You can't get a manual. It's nuts. Man, it's crazy. Why they would? Why would anyone would allow anybody to make that decision for them? It's crazy. So anyway, um, I think I would also skip. So if you look at the interior, I don't know if it'll populate here, but uh, Sport Chrono, I think I'd skip it. I like the cleanliness of the dash without the clock. It just depends on what morning I wake up and which which I decide. But I think I'd skip the clock. You definitely want the bigger fuel tank. It used to be a free option. Now it's 230 bucks, but you definitely want that, uh, especially if this is your touring car. And then uh, I would do on this, continuing then on this theme, is I would choose to do the black calipers rather than yellow. Oh, it keeps jumping there, but this would look sick. I know people get all bent out of shape, but black just super subdued, clean, simple, but black carbon ceramics, that uh, would be awesome. I'm not gonna do front axle lift. 
I know this will be unpopular, but this car isn't low at all, especially the new bumper. So in comparison to cars that are low, it's not particularly very low. I almost never use the axle lift on my RS and the, I feel obligated to use it at times, but I don't need it. Uh, and my GT4 is lowered super low, as low as you can really make it. And I don't ever, I've never hit the front lip at all. So I'm gonna save the weight, save the 3,700 bucks and skip that. Then lights, lights I'm gonna choose the LED matrix design headlights in black. Uh, so you, you have PDLS base. So let's see if we can show the difference here. So it must not come with PDLS, which is kind of weird. So dynamic cornering lights that swivel a low beam. So it must just have regular base lights. So you could choose that, which you can't do. Okay, so you can't do that if you want the touring package in black. Um, you could do the headlights in black with PDLS. So these are still, I guess this is by Xenon. This would be LEDs in black. And you have LED matrix design with PDLS plus. Let's see if it tells us what that is. Uh, let's see, high beam assist. Note, full LED matrix functionality. Individual operation of 84 LEDs is limited to the US market. Individual LEDs are programmed to operate as a single light source to perform the functions listed above. So you have a, allows greater swivel angle, dynamic core, so you get, you get more angle and you get a bunch of little LEDs instead of regular. And I say, if you're going in this deep, let's do it and do it in black. So look, it changes that. That's pretty sick. And then I love this option. So exclusive design tail light, which makes the whole tail light uh, without any red, which I think is freaking cool. So boom, we go exclusive design. That means you would really need to have somebody make you some sort of uh, get rid of this red reflector here. Uh, which would um, help to make it look even better. And this shows clear corners, but these are probably amber, so we probably still need to buy clear corners. But look at how good that looks. So this is my blacked out version. I don't want auto dimming mirrors and I don't want an integrated rain sensor. I want to control my own wiper blades, so I don't want any of that. I don't need park assist and I don't need traffic sign recognition. I don't want either one of those as a tiny little car. Uh, interior. I do like the ambient lighting package. It adds a bunch of little like footwell lighting and stuff like that, which is nice touch. Oh, well, six hundred bucks, but not something you could add later. We choose the storage package, which gives you this weird little cup holder thingy. I'm pretty sure. Let me show us what we get here. It includes a luggage net and front luggage compartment. Okay, so it has a net. That's what that is for. I don't, I don't like having my key painted. I'm just gonna scratch it if I do. Uh, I'm gonna leave the seat belts alone. Um, actually, you know what? I like the seat belts in gray. Um, that's a nice little touch. So notice it'll change those to gray from black to gray. I think that looks good with the gray stitching. Keep it simple, keep it clean. I never do any of the tacks in different colors. Ugh, I hate that. Uh, we do the smoking package, which adds this little thingy here. In fact, I'm not sure that I like that very much. I might eliminate that. We'll have to do a little more work on that. It adds this weird ashtray insert for center cup holder. No, I don't like that. I don't want a freaking extra cup holder. I don't even want the cup holders it comes with. So let's skip that. Man, this computer's really humming right now. Uh, interior leather, so I'm not going to add any of this stuff uh, to the package. Um, I don't want any of these of this fender vents or sun visors or anything like that. The, the, the GT3s come so nice as it is, so I don't really feel the need to add any of this extra leather stuff. Uh, so we're not going to do any extended, and the extensions are usually tiny little pieces that add on to... Uh, the bulk. So when you, we choose the, the $5,000 or $6,000 stitch leather package, almost the whole dash is leather. So you're adding like little parts and pieces and making that leather. You know what I didn't notice is the Touring doesn't give you an option for Alcantara, and there's no Alcantara on the centers on the 992. Uh, so that's interesting. That'll be a nice little difference from what I'm used to. So this is a, I guess, a cloth insert, uh, but there's no Alcantara option. 
I don't need any race techs. That's my friend Nick Murray and his dogs. I'm not doing that. Uh, I'm not doing any interior carbon fiber, so I don't feel the need to do any of that stuff. I like how this is appointed. Uh, the one thing I will do, and I always do this, is the foot, red, foot pedals and footrest in aluminum. Gives you these solid hunks of aluminum on the, on the pedals, just really, really great. Uh, I won't do door seals. Uh, I will add, as much as I hate it, bows. This car would be perfection if they would just give us the Burmester option on this. It would be absolutely amazing. Man, it would be so good. Uh, I'm not going to do any delivery experience, so we won't be doing that. And um, we notice our price tag is $198, right? And so some of the things I was thinking about possibly doing if I didn't go with my normal love of dark, right? Everybody hates, some people hate dark wheels. But if I didn't go the blackout route, uh, and if, so if I didn't do like the carbon roof and I didn't black out this and do the, do the um, do, I wouldn't do the mirror cap. So another option could be, would be to leave the wheels in silver, leave the black brakes, uh, leave this in silver. So what we would do is we'd go down and we would take the touring packet package in black off. Except we would take the carbon roof off, leave the roof alone. We come back down here. So we then need to add in our LED lights, uh, LED matrix headlights in not in black but in regular. So there's our LED and our silver headlights. They won't allow you to do black without doing the blackout package. And I think that was it. So that, that was that shaves off what six grand from this, from the price tag. So six thousand bucks to go with a little bit more grown up look. The other thing that you may want to do uh, is uh, put the head taillights back to red. But that's another potential option to do something a little different than my normal style. You know, this probably still needs to be lowered a little bit. I don't think the car is actually this low. Uh, and you end up with a with a grown-up version of the Touring. And so this ends up being, I mean, I'd probably be able to trade my GT4 for somewhat similar price to what I paid for it. So what was the sticker on? It was like 128 or something like that. Uh, and so, you know, going down, leaving the sport buckets off and keeping options to a, you know, a minimum of 30k uh, could you know could could help you save I mean you could do something like a white and shave save another four grand but I think having something special having something cool would, would be amazing now the other thing I'd be leaning towards is imagine that you did something really special which you do paint a sample we go back and uh, so if I did Brewster green, I would go black, right? So I would make it dark. Uh, so Brewster Green, I'd probably do the black wheels. Actually, you know what? Brewster Green is pretty dark. Whatever color this is, this is pretty cool. But let's just see what it would add up to to do Brewster Green and do it, do it my blacked out version. Touring package in black. And then imagine that you got the leather color selection hmm okay they don't even give us one that we would want so I guess we can scrap that I don't think I would want that beige interior I doubt it's going to show us nope I wouldn't want it to be beige I'd want it to be really dark so yeah it doesn't look like that's going to be a viable option but it would, it would make it 211 Back to the black headlights. I think it probably took off. Where is it? Okay, let's add this in. So 215. We'll do some exclusive version. And then exterior. Oh, that's the other thing I forgot to take off. So if we took that off, left the carbon roof off, let's take this off. Take this off. Let's take off our custom color and go green. And 
if we took our satin black wheels off. So we're down to 184, but we have to go add the headlights back in. Get rid of these seats. No carbon roof. We took off the carbon mirrors. We get rid of the chrono package. We add in our LED matrix headlights, silver. We have our exclusive design taillights on. Ambient lighting, storage package, seatbelts in gray. And no extended leather or anything like that. So yeah, 184. You know, so we're talking about a you know significant cost difference to go with a much more grown-up version of a green car. So this would be a base grown-up version of the car. I think, you know, I would love this, but I think the most viable option for me, I think, is going to be to stick with non-paint to sample, so Python green. Or if I had the option, it allows me, you know, add in the extra, you know, $8,000. So let's say most, the, the, the most likely scenario for me would probably be this, but let's say if I had, if I had my, my choice, we'd do paint to sample and we would go full blackout, satin black wheels, I'd leave the four-way seats, touring package in black, do the carbon fiber roof, we do the mirror trim and carbon fiber, mirror caps. I probably end up choosing to add in the chrono baggage. Leave our PCCBs in black, no front axle lift. We add in our LED matrix. And so, yeah, and so that, that would be the setup. So a 201 sticker. We're fine. Where did that come from? I don't want that. Pedals in aluminum, those system, no delivery center experiences. And um, I don't think we need this extended stuff. And we don't need any accessories or anything like that. We don't need a winter tire, tire set. We certainly don't need any detailing supplies. So, so there's our, there's our build. Imagine this was Brewster Green instead of this red color. So a Mormon spec blacked out Brewster Green in what was the color in this color here. Let's see if we can get a better picture of a old school Brewster Green. That color's freaking awesome. And I think, you know, it probably would do better with just go gunmetal. So if I went and didn't go with black wheels, but I did dark silver like this. So there it is, somewhere between this, doing Python green, should be 192-ish, doing a carbon fiber setup, and Brewster Green, but green nonetheless. I just think that would be freaking sick. And then the green would complement, oh my gosh, when dogs out there digging a giant hole. We yell at them. So that, um, that's my GT3 Touring. So. Everybody, make sure you uh, message uh, the Tom Walsh on uh, Instagram. I think it's at the real Tom Walsh and say, Matt needs a G23 Touring, so make it happen for all of us. Right? So we can make, make the videos and share this car with the world. Uh, I would probably do a very simple exhaust on this. Shoot, I might even do something like a, like a GMG Center Bypass or something like that. Uh, uh, but we'll see. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'd stick with my normal, normal go-to done and done headers or something like that. 
Anyway, thanks for watching. Let's uh, keep our fingers crossed. Maybe someday I get a GT3 Touring. Maybe not. Either way, it's fun to chase, fun to look at. And uh, this would be some version of the spec. We'd all agonize. I'd agonize for days and days about which options to choose. But this would be pretty close to the setup that I would I would pick. And I think that it would uh, it would certainly look awesome. As always, stay tuned for more crazy. One can dream. See you soon.